Welcome back to another episode on the Eldorado Project. So in this video, we have the 180 Fat Front Tire Kit from Native Custom Baggers. Known for being the home of the original 18 inch 180 Fat Front Tire Kit for baggers, Native Custom Baggers has everything you need to fatten up your front end. For 2014 and up touring models, this standard fat tire kit includes American made CNC cut aluminum slider covers and either raw metal, gloss black powder coat or show chrome finish with either a flat stock or pointed style. A one piece 14 gauge stamped steel laser cut fender with a variety of styles to choose from. And you also have the option to add on a steel flush axle with either black or chrome end caps. So this kit does not require any modifications or a fork leg change, but if you're looking to replace your fork legs, Native also carries a kit that includes machine fork legs. Now the tire and wheel are sold separately and Native Custom Baggers has a great selection of custom wheels and tires. Now the tire and wheel setup I chose to go with is a 3D Talon replica wheel in gloss black with Dunlap tire. Now if you are installing a fat front tire, you will need to get your TPMS sensor reset, which is your tire pressure monitoring system. This displays the current front and rear tire pressure on the display screen of your DTS or radio and alerts you when your tires are low. These sensors are calibrated for each specific tire for example, you can't swap or reuse a sensor from a 19 inch wheel onto an 18 inch fat tire. All right, let's go ahead and get this disassembled and get the new kit installed. Now you wanna make sure that your bike is strapped down because it is gonna move around while you're doing this. So I'll start off by removing the front fender. You have two screws on each side. Now I do have the Hogworks wrap front fender so I have the screw with a nut on the back. Now if you have the stock fender, your screws will screw directly into the fender. There's no nut on the back. All right, so from here, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the entire fairing. Now you don't have to remove the fairing to access all your screws to get everything off, but because I wanna show you on camera what's going on under here, I'm gonna go ahead and get it out of the way. So for the windshield and trim, you have three screws, your two outer screws are shorter screws, and your center screw is a longer screw. So I'll put the long center screw back in to support the outer fairing while I'm removing the other screws. So you have two screws on your right and left side, and they're T27. Your top screw will be a longer screw, and your bottom screw will be a shorter screw. So to remove this panel, you have a screw on each side and it's a 5 30 seconds hex bit. Now I'll go ahead and remove the center screw and completely remove the outer fairing. And I'll just set it on the tire and disconnect the headlight. So for the tank, I did remove the two screws on the front and two screws on the rear so I can scoot it back, just so I had enough room so I can take this dash panel off. So I'll go ahead and cover up the tank so the panel and the tank do not get scratched. So I did remove the two screws on each side. It'll just pop out just like that. Just turn your ignition knob to the left to have more clearance. Now you do have a connector on the left and a connector on the right. Now the release tab on the left connector is on the top and the release tab for the right connector is on the bottom. Now before I take out any other screws, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect any wires that are leading down towards the neck and towards the rear. Now it does seem like a lot of wires, but you don't have to disconnect them all. Really you just have to follow whatever's going down towards the neck and towards the rear and disconnect those. So in my case, any wires that are going down towards the neck and towards the rear are connected to the stereo. Now if you have any aftermarket stereos, you probably have some extra harnesses. You want to make sure you disconnect those.
Now for the stereo, you can leave the USB and the GPS connected. So now I'll remove the right and left turn signals. Now I do have the Hogworks turn signals. You have two screws and they're a 3 16 hex bit. I'll go ahead and disconnect it here. So once you remove your turn signals, you can go ahead and remove your fairing skirt. Now that I have all the screws out, I have everything disconnected that's leading down towards the neck and towards the rear. I'll pull up at a 45 degree angle on the fairing and pull it off. So I'll go ahead and zip tie all these wires into a bundle just to get them out of the way. So like I said, you do not need to remove your entire fairing in order to access your screws. I just wanted to get it out of the way so I can show you what I'm doing on camera. Now in order to change out your fork slider covers, you have these two screws right here and it's the same thing on the other side and you'll be able to change these out. Now if you're doing some type of fork seal change or you're changing out your front suspension like I am, you want to be able to access this pin screw on the top and then you have these two pin screws on the bottom. So first thing I'll do is remove the brake calipers on each side. You have two screws holding them on and they're a 10 millimeter 12 point socket. So I will be changing out the brake pads along with the rotors to all new Lindahl brakes and rotors. I'll cover that more in depth in a separate video. Here you have the wheel speed sensor guide. You just want to make sure you keep track of that. All right, so now it's time to remove the front tire. You just want to keep track of your spacers. I have a spacer right here. These groove lines are facing inboard, so I'll make sure I install it the same way. Then you have your axle and on the other side you have your wheel speed sensor you want to make sure you install this the same way you don't want to have it flip-flopped then you have your axle nut so what i'll do first is break loose this axle nut for this axle nut i'm using a 15 16 deep socket and then you have a pin screw on this side on the bottom i'll loosen that up for the pin screw, I'm using a six millimeter hex bit. So here I'm using a center jack to raise the front of the bike up to get some tension off and then I'll knock this axle through. Here I'm using a rubber mallet to knock the axle through. You don't want to damage your threads. And I'll just use a screwdriver to pull the axle out the rest of the way. Just make sure you're keeping track of your wheel speed sensor and your spacer. Now I'm not keeping this axle because I am changing it out to the native 25 millimeter black flush axle. But if you are keeping yours, just make sure you keep everything together with your spacer, your washer, and your nut. Now from here, I'll go ahead and roll the tire out. So looking at the stock wheel on the right side, you do have a steel bearing here. And if you look on the left side for your ABS or wheel speed sensor, you have a plastic, looks like a plastic clear bearing. It's still a solid bearing. You just have this plastic here. All right, so now I'll remove the suspension. Now, usually if I'm just doing a fork seal change or I'm upgrading the suspension, I'll do one at a time. Now, because I am changing out the slider covers, I'll go ahead and remove them both. So I'll slide the axle back through. That way, when I'm loosening up the pinch bolts, it doesn't slide down on me. So I'll start on the right side, I'll loosen up these two bottom pinch bolts, and then I'll loosen up the top. Now you just wanna loosen these up, you don't wanna take them out all the way. And to loosen these up, I'm using a quarter inch hex bit. So when you're loosening up this last pinch bolt, just make sure you have a hold of your fork slider so it doesn't fall on you. All 
All right, so now I'll move the slider covers. You have these two screws up here and they're a 5 16 socket. Now, if you did choose to go with a weighted balanced tire, I do suggest getting a wheel balancer and truing stand. Now, if you are keeping your stock rotors, obviously you wanna check them and make sure they're still serviceable. You are gonna have some numbers stamped on the side. It's gonna show you what your minimum width is. Here, I'm using a digital micrometer. Now, why you wanna use a micrometer? Because it allows you to get deep into the rotor because this outside edge is gonna be a little thicker on the outside of the rotor than it will be on the inside. That's why you wanna use a digital micrometer instead of using a caliper gauge because you are gonna get a bigger width on the outside of the rotor than on the inside where your brake pads meet. Just make sure your micrometer is clean on the insides or it'll give you a false reading. Now you can use inches or millimeters and then obviously you wanna clean your disc just to make sure that there's nothing there that's also gonna falsify your reading. So on this rotor, it's stamped 4.5 millimeters. I'll show you on the outside how it's a little thicker on the outside edge. Just tighten that down. It doesn't need to be super tight. As you can see there, it's at five on the outside edge. Now, if you go to where the brake pads and the rotor meet, it's gonna be a little lower. So now I'm at 4.9 and the service limit on this one is 4.5, so these are still good to go. Now, if I was reusing my rotor, I'll go ahead and just check different spots just to confirm. So on this truing stand, you do want it to be level. They do have adjustable feet in case you don't have a level surface. And then you have a bubble indicator here that lets you know if you're level. So this would be your heaviest spot. You would mark up here with a piece of tape along with your weights. And then you do quarter turns. However, there's different ways, different techniques on doing this, but you obviously every time you move this tire any spot, it should just stay where it's at. Now this is balanced from the factory. Over time, these things do shift, uh, just the wear and tear. Um, so yeah, this only has about 1200 miles on it, I believe, on this tire. If I was reusing this tire, I would go ahead and rebalance it. Uh, not doing anything to the fat front tire because it is bead balanced. But once we get the rotors mounted on to the front tire, I'll check those. I'll get those dialed in just to make sure everything is good on this stand. Let's go ahead and get this off. Let's get these old rotors off. Why do I need to get these off? I don't need to get them off because I got some new ones that I'm going to put on the fat front tire. But if you are keeping these, just make sure you check if yours need to be serviced or changed out. Uh, you do want to clean them up, get all that brake dust, that friction material off of here, uh, the transfer material get that off of here and get them cleaned up. But I do want to take these off, compare some weights between the Lindell brake rotors and the stock rotors. We'll go ahead and get these off and compare some weights. So to take this rotor off, you have five screws and they're a T40. You have your spring washer, and you have your hub, and your screw. Now, anytime you're changing out rotors or you're servicing them, you definitely want to change out these screws. Now, on a service note, with anything that involves Loctite on your bike, which is 99% of it, you definitely want to thread chase your holes.
So like I mentioned before, you will have an ABS side. They even marked it here with a sticker. It says ABS install on sensor side. So here I do have Lindell's Bowtie Cut Omega Rotors along with the Z Plus brake pads. I'll cover these more in a later video. Now, even though this is a new wheel, I did thread chase these holes and blew everything out just to make sure that there was nothing in there. Now, before I mount the rotors, I will clean them off. A lot of times these rotors are packaged with a protective film. If it has any packaging grease or anything like that, you wanna make sure you get all that off. Now, some rotors do have an indication or a mark indicating that it needs to line up with the valve stem. This doesn't have that, but if yours has it, just line it up with the valve stem. Obviously you want your holes to line up. So with my disc screws, I'll throw on some red Loctite. And then when you go to put your screws in, you wanna tighten them down in a star pattern. And then you also wanna to torque them down in a star pattern. You wanna do that, that way it sets properly onto the wheel. Now if you're using your standard stock screws, you're gonna to torque them down 16 to 24 foot pounds. So with these Lindell titanium screws, you don't wanna to torque them down more than 15 to 18 foot pounds. And to torque these down, I'm using a 730 seconds hex bit. So it's gonna be the exact same thing on the other side. Now also, you wanna inspect your screws, make sure there's no burrs or anything like that that's gonna interfere with your mounting hole here. You don't want a bad screw to mess up your threads in here because then that's just a bad day when you can just replace the screw. All right, so I have the new Lindell rotors mounted onto the fat front tire. Like I said, I'll do a whole separate video on the Lindell rotors along with the brake pads front and back just because they deserve their own separate video. I'm gonna go ahead and get the fat tire onto the truing stand. I'm not working on balance because this is bead balance. Don't have to worry about adding any weights. I just wanna make sure that these rotors are true. Everything is set correctly. I will check the run out on them. I do have a dial indicator set on the Bike Master. It's just attached magnetically. I'll check that just to make sure everything is good. Now it is a little hard with the dial indicator on these rotors, just because all the cutouts, the designs and stuff like that, as you would your traditional stock rotors where everything is flat. You just have a couple holes here and there. Everything looks good to the naked eye, but I just want to confirm and make sure that everything is good to go. So let's get it on here. I'll take these off. I had this one tightened down already. You have your set screws right here. You just loosen them up and then these can shift. A lot of times, uh, if you have any questions about this O-ring, what I use it for, is just to keep it from sliding far to the left or sliding far to the right. So I'll take the O-ring off, take this holder off, take this cone off. I'll put my rod through the wheel and we want this cone to sit right inside of that bearing but what we want is no play in there. So I'll show you how I do it. Just stick the rod through there. Now we want this to be even. So what I'll do is I'll flip it over and all it is, it's gonna keep pressure on that cone, set it in place. So I can take my other cone, slide it on here. I'll go ahead and tighten it down. I'll go ahead and flip it back over. So we want zero play in that rod and these cones. I'll take my other holder, I'll put this on. Now these don't need to be super tight. You just wanna get it down nice and snug. Obviously you don't want them shifting around. So you just set it on those rollers. You can just loosen this up, bring it closer. And with anything else, you wanna zero it out. So on this rotor, there's a lot of cutouts. You do have one flat surface right here. So I'll set that dial indicator on that. And what I'm checking for is just oscillation or any type of warping going on. These are brand new, they shouldn't be warped. But I just want to double check and then just slowly turn the tire 
that dowel indicator is set on there. Everything is looking good. The needle is barely moving. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but it's barely moving. All right, everything looks good on that one. I'll go ahead and switch it to the other side. Now, obviously this is a new rotor, but it could also be the hub. So if you have a brand new rotor and you have some bad run out, I would check the hub. It could just be a bad bearing. So I do like to make sure I mark on the lever and on the brake pedal, not to press or pull the brakes. That way, when these calipers are off, you don't want these pistons to push all the way out and then just making it really difficult to compress them back in. Now from here, I'll inspect my lines, make sure I have no leaks. So I'll take the reservoir cap off on the front brake massive cylinder and I'll take some fluid out. That way, when I compress these pistons back in, that fluid doesn't rise up and overflow. So you don't wanna stick a screwdriver in here, and especially if you have new brake pads, you're gonna have uneven wear if you sit there and start jamming away to compress those pistons back in in order to fit your brake disc. Now I do have a brake caliper tool that I use. It is for a car, but it also works on these pretty well. I can get this all the way into here. Now you can put some painter's tape on this side to protect your caliper, but it's been fine so far. And then I just tighten this down and it compresses those pistons evenly. And it'll be the same thing for the other side. You just switch it over, kind of work it in there, tighten this down. So here I'll just take the screen off. You can use a screwdriver, but these pop out pretty easily. Just kind of work your finger under there and it should work right out. Now I do plan on getting these painted in the El Dorado Gold and you guys will see that later. All right, so now I'm gonna install these heavy duty fork slider covers from Native Custom Baggers. These are some solid fork slider covers. You have your Native Custom Baggers logo back here. You have your cutout to accommodate that wide front fender. And then I did choose the option for this tip. You can get it flat, but I like the style on these with this pointed tip. So we'll go ahead and get these installed. You have your two mounting locations right here. I'll add some blue Loctite to these threads. So the torque value on these cover screws is 24 to 48 inch pounds. All right, so now it's time to reinstall the front suspension. If you haven't done so already, make sure you install the fork slider covers that came in the kit before you get your suspension on. Now to get these lined up, on your upper fork bracket. I'll show you once I get these on, but you have this tapered area. You wanna line this up with your upper fork bracket. Now you just wanna make sure that you're installing these on the right side. The lower fork slider with a pinch screw is gonna go on your right side. So on the back of this fork bracket, you want that tapered area about midway. And then you'll have this all lined up here So on the back of the fork bracket, I have it lined up midway on that tapered area. And then all the way around, I have it lined up just below that tapered area. So there is a tightening sequence to these pin screws on the fork bracket. You're gonna tighten the lower pin screws first. You'll tighten the upper screw, and then you'll tighten the lower screw. And then lastly, you'll tighten the upper pin screw. Now the torque value for these pinch screws is 14 to 18 foot pounds. Now 
Now it's not gonna be completely lined up all the way around. You just wanna make sure you get both sides as equal as possible. Now I did choose to go with the Hogworks wide front fender, color matched in the Eldorado gold. Now Native Custom Baggers has a variety of wide front fenders to accommodate that fat front tire that you can add on with your kit. Now it is a little easier if you have some help to get everything lined up because you don't wanna scratch this up. You just wanna make sure you're taking your time. Other than that guys, let's get it on there. So I'll use some painter's tape to protect the paint so I don't scratch it up when I'm putting it on there. Now before I start to route the fender up and get it installed, I'll take my lower fork sliders and turn them outboard. Like I said, it is a little easier if you have some help, but it's still doable. Kind of hold that in place. Once you get it up far enough, you can turn these back inboard. And then just bring it down. Make sure you have your screws ready. So I have my screw with a nut. I'll start from the outside in. Now I have seen it in some cases where it's from the inside out and they finish it off with a black anodized acorn nut. Just makes it look a lot cleaner. To tighten these down, I'm using a quarter inch hex bit and a half inch wrench. Now before I start anything else, I just wanna confirm that I have clearance with the tire and the fender. So I wasn't too comfortable with the clearance between the tire and the inside of the fender. The mounting nuts on the back were just sticking out a little too far. So I did go to the local hardware store and I purchased these flush screws with these anodized acorn nuts. So now everything is sitting nice and flush and I have a lot more clearance. So here at the Native Custom Baggers flush axle cap, this is gonna go on the left side. You have this external knurling or teeth. This is what's gonna grip on the inside of that axle hole. You have this screw with a nut and washer. I'll show you how this works once I start installing it. But first, I'm gonna put a thin layer of grease on this external knurling or teeth. I'll also coat the internal threads and the axle hole. And I'll also grease the threads of the installation bolt. So I'll take the installation bolt and I'll back it up until it touches the head of the bolt. Throw my washer on. So you have your flush axle cap. I'll put it into here until it stops. I'll take my installation bolt, I'll start screwing this in. Just make sure you're not cross threading. So here I have the flush axle cap with the installation bolt, nut and washer. I have this threaded in all the way into the flush axle cap. The teeth are touching the inside of the axle hole. So what I'll do now is hold this head bolt in place while I turn this nut. This is gonna pull those teeth into the axle hole and lock it in place. So here I'm using two three quarter inch wrenches, but you could also use a 19 millimeter wrench. And once I get it started, I'll lock the forks into place so it's not moving around on me. Now this is gonna be a little tough to get this to set in. Just do slow turns and take your time. All right, now that I have this flush, it's not going in anymore. I'll go ahead and get this bolt out. Now when you're mounting this tire, just remember what side was your ABS. Now because this is a fat front tire, that directional arrow is gonna be facing the opposite direction. So I'll slowly lower the bike onto the tire until I get the holes to line up. So with this new flush axle, I'll add some anti-seize. I'll also add some anti-seize inside the right axle hole and inside the spacer. I'll also add some anti-seize to the inside of the wheel speed sensor. Now I'll get this flush axle in 
Don't forget your spacer and your wheel speed sensor and which way they were orientated. My spacer with the groove lines was facing towards the rotor. And on the wheel speed sensor, this rubber part, which is the wheel speed sensor, the spacer was outboard and that rubber was inboard. So on the wheel speed sensor, you want it to touch and then just back it off a little bit. So the axle is gonna thread right into that flush axle cap that I mounted earlier. So to tighten this down, I'm using a 5.8 socket. Double check that wheel speed sensor that it's not turning when you're tightening it down. Now Native Custom Baggers has a torque value for their axle and it's 50 foot pounds. Now if you're installing your stock axle for this model bike, the torque value is 70 to 75 foot pounds. So for the flush axle cap on the right side, you have this seal or O-ring. It's gonna sit right inside of here. And once you tighten down the pinch screw, it's gonna tighten down on that O-ring or seal, and it's gonna keep that cap in place. Now the torque value for this axle pinch screw is 18 to 22 foot-pounds. So now I'll remount the left brake caliper. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you thread chase these holes and also clean off your mounting screws. Now for your left caliper, you do have this wheel speed sensor guide. You wanna make sure you install this the right way. You should see some wear marks from the screws on the mounting bracket. It'll tell you which way it was orientated. And once again, I'm using a 10 millimeter 12 point socket to tighten these down. Now the torque value for the front caliper mounting screws is 28 to 38 foot-pounds. Once I get the brake calipers mounted on, I'll go through it one more time, check the clearance between the tire and the fender, and also the rotors, calipers, and brake pads. Alright guys, so my final thoughts on this uh, fat tire kit from Native Custom Baggers. Um, awesome kit, everything comes included. Like I said, I did go with the Hogworks uh, Color Match Eldorado Gold Fat Front Fender, so I didn't go with the Native Custom Baggers Fender. They do have a lot of fenders available that you can choose from, but obviously I went with the Hogworks because they have it color matched in the Eldorado Gold. But either way guys, this fat tire feels amazing. Uh, it handles great, especially on turns. I can turn corners a lot deeper, taking this out to Sturges and in those twisties, um, everything felt great. <laughs> just turning, just it just it was a whole different ball game. This is my first time riding with a fat tire kit on the front. Uh, I might just end up throwing one on the road glide. I really don't know, but I really do like the way uh, this feels on the street glide. Uh, yeah, so. This fat front tire kit from Native Custom Baggers, I really do enjoy it. it. Feels great. It handles a lot better. Stays true on the road. It doesn't follow any cracks or you know those lines in the road, those rain lines. But yeah, other than that, guys, I definitely enjoy it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, the install is pretty easy if you follow it along. Now, obviously, I did the uh, suspension change. You don't have to do a suspension change. But if you want to do a suspension change, that video will be coming up with the Russ Wearmont designs, front and rear shocks. But yeah, other than that, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you on the next one.